Titans Go! If you're a fan of cartoons and a fan of super cool, super stylish superheroes, Teen Titans is probably for you. The original series is known today for its gritty art style, its superb character development, and of course, its absolute banger theme song. But for every yin, there's a yang. For every good, there's a bad. And for every Teen Titans, there's a Teen Titans Go. <laughs> I'm only being half serious here. The truth is, I've never really watched Teen Titans Go before. This show premiered back in 2013, so I wasn't really watching cartoons then. I was probably too busy crying over the ending of Breaking Bad. It was a serious moment for me. Don't worry about it. Listen, if I'm being completely honest, I'm not really sure what to expect from Teen Titans Go. Some people swear it's not that bad, and other people swear it's the digital media equivalent to the devil himself. I'm sure not all its episodes are that bad, but either way, I like overanalyzing bad cartoons. It's kind of what I do here. So today, we'll be taking a look at the two worst Teen Titans Go episodes episodes of all time. Will it be that bad? Maybe. But will it be completely unwatchable? Honestly, maybe. Anyway, I've stalled long enough, so grab your copy of Teen Titans for the Nintendo GameCube. I think this is the first time I actually have the right game, by the way. And let's jump into what may very well be the episode that ruined Teen Titans Go. This first episode is called Waffles. If you've ever watched the show before, you know it's about to happen. This is the second most hated episode ever, so just keep that in mind. Our adventure begins with Beast Boy and Cyborg saying the word waffles over and over again. Everyone else is a little confused on what's going on, when eventually they realize that Beast Boy and Cyborg are essentially just playing a game to see who can go the longest while only saying the word waffles. Waffles! waffles. Waffles. We're already off to an amazing start. Starfire gets really interested in this game for some reason and says she would love to play with them. But by saying something that's not the word waffles, she's already lost. Mission failed. We'll get them next time. I should probably run through all these characters real quick since they all play an important role in these episodes. Beast Boy can turn into animals and is all around just a super chill dude. Like all he does is play video games and hang out. Cyborg is part robot and also pretty lazy, I guess. Him and Beast Boy are best friends, I think is what the wiki said. Starfire is an intergalactic princess. Stay with with me, who can basically destroy anyone. She's super kind and nice, but also kind of reminds me of Homelander. Raven, she's probably the coolest part of the team. She has these weird demonic magical powers, and best of all, she's super emo. And then finally, we have Robin. He's Batman's former sidekick. Everyone knows Robin. In this show, though, he's more or less the leader of the group and kind of a perfectionist. Now that you know everything about everyone, back to the waffles. <gasps> That was actually hilarious. Robin immediately gets annoyed of this game, and I'm not kidding, pulls out a gun because he's about to shoot them, <laughs> I guess. Starfire stops him from committing an actual murder and instead asks the Waffle Boys for clarification. Sure, the game seems a little annoying at first, but if everyone understood the reasoning for it, maybe everyone would have more fun? Right? Obviously, they're in the middle of the game, so instead of answering your question like actual functioning people, they instead break out into song where the only lyric is, you guessed it, waffles. There's not even a story here. What am I watching? What is this? I'm not kidding when I say this entire song is about 40 seconds long and they say the word waffles 33 times. Yes. I counted. The next scene is Robin actually making waffles for breakfast. And for some reason, this episode shows this off by having some weird infomercial type thing where we can see the ingredients he's using. It's all very weird. No one's following these instructions. Anyway, Beast Boy and Cyborg actually get mad because they didn't want waffles for breakfast. They wanted a sandwich or something, but they can only say the word waffles. So it all gets very confusing. I just know somewhere out there, there's a kid who thought this was hilarious and decided to go around all day just saying the word waffles to his parents. And like, good for him. Okay, kids are allowed to have fun. I just, I feel, I feel for the parents, man. <laughs> Kids be like that, you know? Yeah. Waffles. Did you just growl like a dog? But then, believe it or not, this episode actually does have a real story attached to it. What a great idea. This is cinema. Robin, Raven, and Starfire decide to go check out some warehouse on their own because the other two basically just logged off for the day. So we skip ahead to this warehouse, which is when we meet the ultimate evil bad guy, Brother Blood. I'm actually not going to talk about him too much because he's basically just a bad guy. But I do want to mention that he's voiced by John DiMaggio, who's kind of the secret goat of cartoons. Okay, I love him. Hopefully he doesn't have any bad takes on Twitter because the last time I complimented a voice actor, it didn't go well. <laughs> anyway, Brother Blood traps our heroes in some sort of cage. Turns out he lured them to the warehouse as some kind of trap or something. And the cage they're in is invincible, by the way. None of their powers work in it. If only Mr. Game & Watch was here, he could probably squeeze right by those massive gaps between the lasers. So Brother Blood's plan is to get verbal acknowledgement from everyone so that he can access all the weapons back at Titan Tower. He wants to use all the weapons, but he needs their verbal confirmation to do so. He uses some weird mind control hypnosis thing on everyone, but it just doesn't work. <laughs> and like, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I'm pretty sure this might be the only time in the whole series where he tries to use this power. I think that's what the wiki said. I could be wrong here, but 
It'd be pretty hilarious if I wasn't. So because that doesn't work, to get some answers, the bad guy summons a robot to do all the dirty work for him. This is just like real steel, the movie. It's a great movie. This robot's really bad and is gonna like kill everyone or something. And I'm not kidding. There's this four second clip where the editors of this episode just tried to cram in as many stock sound effects as they could for some reason. <laughs> You too can become a professional audio mixing engineer. All it takes is the science fiction audio pack directly from Adobe's list of free downloads. Was that just YouTube's audio library? What was that? Anyway, everyone is scared because the robot is actually about to kill them. So they each give in and give verbal access, allowing Brother Blood to get the weapons. But actually, this doesn't really matter because in order to get what he wants, he needs verbal access from all five members of the group. This is so exciting. We switch back to Beast Boy and Cyborg and yep, they're just, they're just singing the word waffles over and over again. Not really anything I can even joke about here, honestly. <laughs> you know when you repeat a word over and over again and it just doesn't even sound like a word? Waffles. 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 I, I don't know what I'm doing. Anyway, the bad guy tells Beast Boy and Cyborg to come to the warehouse and give him verbal access or whatever. And what precedes that scene is a whole minute of Beast Boy and Cyborg sneaking around and fighting for a bit while only saying the word. You, you know the word. You know the word. And if you thought that was bad, the whole next minute is just them getting captured and literally tortured by the robot from earlier because they just keep saying waffles. There's honestly not much to this episode. It's just really goofy. Anyway, to make an extremely drawn out section cut short, every Teen Titan starts singing waffles because why the hell not? And the bad guy gets so annoyed that he straight up just leaves the warehouse and leaves them alone. Presumably to cut off his own ears, but that's just a theory. Again! The episode ends with Beast Boy and Cyborg finally saying some different words. They tell the rest of the team that they're annoying for saying waffles so much. How quirky, dude. And that's it. Two of them are basically on the verge of death, and the other three are still stuck in an unbreakable cage. Does any of this matter? Who cares? And that's the second lowest rated episode of Teen Titans Go of all time. I can actually kind of see why. I haven't seen any other episodes, so I don't really have anything to compare it to. But this episode just wasn't that funny or interesting or well thought out in any way. <laughs> But I know what you're gonna say, Darzy, it's a kid show, why should we care? And I guess, honestly, you probably shouldn't. Until now, because it's time to watch the actual worst Teen Titans Go episode of all time. Jumping straight into this one, this episode is called The Return of Slade. This is a very cool title, try to remember it. For context, Slade is basically the main bad guy in this universe. He's super evil and likes to do bad things. The episode begins with our Teen Titans beating him up off camera and then returning home to their tower. You might be thinking that's not a horrible way to start the episode. It gets rid of a lot of annoying, unnecessary scenes, probably, you're thinking. Well, actually, that's, that's not it at all. I'm not kidding here, instead of showing us any of the fight at all, they just pop some text on screen saying that the fight took three episodes and a movie to show case, despite those episodes and that movie obviously not actually existing. It's all very clever. I'm sure every action fan found this hilarious. But like I said, the episode starts with the gang celebrating their massive W. You see, Slade's a pretty tough guy, and they beat him, so this is like a really big moment. Again, happened off camera, so we didn't get to see any of it. Instead of showing us anything important at all, they just make fun of themselves by saying what happened off screen and how cool it was. Like, us as the viewer are the butt of the joke here, I guess. How am I supposed to encourage this? This is like horrible writing. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. So many compelling storylines came together and resolved in such a satisfying wow, dude. way. Wow, dude. Wow. I wish I wish I would have seen that. Wow. I know this goes without saying, but I have to remind you guys that there are many cartoons in the world that have pulled off good writing before. Like, just because a show is primarily made for kids doesn't excuse this boring narrative that feels like it was written the night before. Anyway, like I said, the gang is hyped for their win, so they decide to throw a party to celebrate. They want to get music, junk food, movies, and most importantly, an oddly disturbing clown who's drawn in a different art style. How exciting. Cyborg and Beast Boy are actually hyped about this clown because they just get hyped about everything in the show, I think. <laughs> but Robin, Starfire, and especially Raven all think clowns are kind of lame. Which, to be honest, they kind of have a point. Like, circus clowns are kind of cool, I guess. But those birthday party clowns are just a little weird to me. I don't know. Ooh, dude, you got fucking... You got a flower. It squirts water. Wow. <laughs> anyway, anyway. And that's the whole premise of this episode, by the way, is the clown. So they finally have this party and the clown shows up. Starfire leaves immediately because she's actually terrified or something. The clown starts performing, which is when something actually surprising happens. Beast Boy and Cyborg actually think the clown is kind of boring. It was a little unpredictable. Like I thought they'd be super hyped about how like childish the clown was. And for that, I'll actually applaud the writers for the swerve because I'd feel bad if I didn't compliment them at least once during this entire video. So. <laughs> Beast Boy and Cyborg say that this clown is stupid and that clowns in general were a lot cooler when they were kids. Again, this moment surprised me. But seemingly the show's most idiotic characters had this weird scene where they complain about how things they used to love just don't hit the same anymore. It's kind of like when everyone comments that they want me to review a specific movie because it's so good. But it's really just nostalgia speaking and I'm not watching the Emoji Movie. Please stop asking me to watch the Emoji Movie. I'm just kidding. No one asked me to watch this thing. 
everyone knows it's garbage. Anyway, none of that really matters because Beast Boy and Cyborg do the logical thing and kidnap the clown so they can genetically alter his DNA against his will and make him cooler. So it's the next morning now and Starfire is terrified of clowns still, right? That was the thing. Which is why it's extremely horrible timing when Cyborg and Beast Boy bring their monstrosity of a creation into the living room. Starfire freaks out here. She really, really doesn't like clowns. What was once a normal average clown is now some super jacked social experiment, which looks like a mix between Sweet Tooth from Twisted Metal and Dave Bautista's first wrestling gimmick. The boys tell the clown to do something funny, so almost immediately the clown grabs Robin and just fucking chucks him into the TV. Oh no. <laughs> I'm laughing because this is just actually insane. The clown just straight up beats Robin to a pulp for a while, like he gives him multiple concussions. There's no way. Raven is the voice of reason here, telling the boys that this is a little ridiculous and that he's clearly evil, so they need to stop. But it's too late because the clown is already gone and causing havoc amongst all the little boys and girls. He left the tower and goes to a toy shop to set off a bomb. It's all very dramatic. The gang agrees that he needs to be stopped, so they decide to do this drawn out bit where they all get out of a clown car dressed like clowns. The car is very small. You get the joke. Sadly, it doesn't really do anything at all, and the evil clown is about to destroy everyone. When, all of a sudden, Star fire shows up and knocks him out in one punch. <laughs> Remember? Because she hates clowns. And she reminds me of Homelander. And that was the lowest rated episode of Teen Titans Go ever, apparently. Honestly, I don't exactly know why this is the worst one. It wasn't good, and it's kind of uneventful, but it was far from the worst thing I've ever watched. If I'm being honest, I kind of hated the Waffles episode a lot more. But if my research is correct, the reason this last episode is so hated is because it's called The Return of Slade. Remember, that was the title of the episode? Well, Slade literally never makes an on-screen appearance, so they hype people up for what sounds like an interesting episode and the return of a really beloved villain, only to give you pretty much more filler garbage. But at the end of the day, I'm pretty sure that's all this TV show really is. It's a little hard to hate on the show because I'm pretty sure it was meant to be more of a kid-friendly, lighthearted spin-off thing. If you compare it to the original, sure, it sucks and lacks any depth whatsoever. But what are we doing here, guys? Okay, are we just bad-mouthing any show made for kids? Okay, what about, uh, what about Pengu? Okay, should I cover Pingu? It might, it might be flawed. Who knows, you know? That honestly sounds like fun, actually. <laughs> I won't lie. I kind of want to cover Pingu now. But anyway, that's the video. These weren't really that bad overall, even if the writing just sucks. Either way, it's a cartoon. So care or don't. It doesn't matter. Give this video a like if you made it this far. It really helps out the channel. Subscribe if you're new and become a member if you can afford it and want to support me further. Thank you to all my members. They're on screen right now. I love you all. Discord coming soon, probably. I don't know. Maybe eventually. Paula Abdul scores this one a solid 200 waffles out of five. And yeah. Thanks for watching.